Hey, welcome to the Natural Medic Adventures. This is Craig, your host, and this week I am at Hevener Runestone Park outside of Hevener, Oklahoma. If you look right here on the boards behind me, Gloria, who actually did the extensive study over 40 years on the runestones that were found here, and you have also Mr. Herbert Ward, whose land was donated to the state for a park, and now the city, and Mr. Senator Clem Hamilton, who made legislation to uh, support this as a state park. The thought is that Vikings came up the Mississippi River from their colonies in northern Canada into the Arkansas River and into the Toto. And whether that happened or not, I don't know. Gloms Valley, or Gloms, I think it's in a shelter house down here. We'll see in a little bit. And there are other rune stones that have been found in the area as well. So, it's a very mysterious stone. It's been protected in this little shelter for a number of years. But you can go here and go check it out. Let's go check it out now. Supposedly this particular part of the park is where an old Viking cave was reportedly here in the area. Some of the old timers that came out here, they said that there was a opening in this particular area. You can see this is a big tall bluff. And it's made out of shale, sandstone, not normally materials that caves form in very well, at least stable caves. So if there was a cave ever here, it's not here now. You see the bluff line here? And over there is where the runestone is. Let's go check it out. There is a seasonal waterfall that is running pretty nice right now. It's Memorial Day weekend 2023 and you can see it's got some good flow all the way down here to the bottom. Hotter parts of the, of the summer probably not running like this. Interestingly enough in this area of along the eastern border with uh, Arkansas there's been other rune stones that have been discovered. These are replicas of the original. Right here, the Shawnee rune stone. Actually, it's closer to Oklahoma City, towards central Oklahoma. And then the Podo rune stone right there. What they think they say is the Podo one says magic or protection to, and then the other one may have been a gravestone that bears the name Medoc. Not really sure what they mean, but they are translated, and that's what they that's what they translate as. The lady that found the stones, her name is Gloria Stewart Farley, and she had seen it as a child. And as far as oral history goes, this stone had been around in the area, known to the Native Americans, the Choctaw, that lived in this area, since like the 1830s, which is pretty much when the time when they were moved here from other parts of the U.S., southeastern U.S., over here to Oklahoma, and because they weren't able to understand what it said. There's a picture of her and her sons. They thought it was an Indian writing. It was known as an Indian rock for a long time. You've probably seen Viking ships in popular media, the show Vikings on History Channel. They ran these basically fast moving, low draft vehicles, or vehicles, ships that were able to go across the ocean but also go through very shallow waters. So it's possible they could have come around the tip of Florida and up into the Mississippi and then followed the Arkansas and up into the Poto River, which is a branch of the Arkansas River. I'm not saying that's probably that likely, but it certainly is possible. The runes actually were translated by Dr. Richard Nielsen, who was from the University of Denmark. It says Valley Owned by Gloam which could be a land claim or a marker of property. There is the examples of the writing, all very similar from the different ones. Evidence, what the researchers of this particular site thinks is that people came here much sooner than Christopher Columbus did. The runestone itself is behind me. Here it is. It's in glass, so it cannot be touched or messed with. That's hard probably to see the writing there, but there's the writing. 
at about the level that a man would be working. The runes themselves are pretty uniform, standing about oh, six to eight inches tall. And it says, Valley According to Gloam. Pretty fascinating place. If you're ever over here, definitely come check it out. It's the waterfall on the side above. You can see the little pool it's draining into. Pretty cool. The waterfall from above. The rune stone house is over there. And if you look over here, you can see the water flowing and further uphill. Really nice. Probably later in the season, not flowing like this or at all because it's getting me too dry. Used to be a state park and it was day use only, so they've converted a lot of these since this became city property. They converted a lot of this through hip camp to be campsites. So they moved the picnic table off of this pad over to here. Got a fire ring. Somebody built a fire ring right there, a lantern pole. There is no water up here. There is no electricity up here. So you can bring a jackery, bring your own water. You'll be good to go. Very comfortable last night. Good tent with a big thick air mattress. The only problem with this site, not really a problem, but the only issue is you got to go up this long walk to come up here. And it's pretty much uphill. About 50 yards or so from the road. There's only parking for one vehicle, but you can squeeze in two. We did that and they're not really a big issue. But nice night here. It's Memorial Day weekend. Weather was great. Got cool last night and that was rather enjoyable. But anyway, that's available. I'll put a link in the description about Hip Camp if you want to check that out. Campsite 10. It's located at the top of the hill that mom and dad told us about when we were growing up. They walked uphill both ways to go to school. Here it is. That's the only probably shortcoming with this particular site is you do have to walk up and down to get back and forth to the site. But it's not that far. It's only about 50 meters, 50 yards up and not too bad. What are my final thoughts for this place? You know, it's a nice little park. It's a city park now, not a state park. When it was a state park, there was no overnight use. It was a day use only. They've converted a lot of these sites here into campsites. Some of them better than others. The one that I got to stay at, as you saw, was up a hill, but it's very secluded, remote, very neat place. I'm definitely impressed overall with, with this little park. It's a little park, but it's definitely got some interesting things you don't see every day. Certainly, if you're in this area, come check it out. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all those other things. I'll see you out there on the trail.